Hi guys and welcome to a new episode of A Dog Soul. I'm Anita, I'm your host and a professional dog trainer. I specialize in fear and aggression and of course in a dog's well-being. Today we're going to talk about crates and kennels. I think it's a very important topic because those two are used a lot all over the world and I think not everybody understands well why a dog's reacting in a special kind of way. And that's what we are going to talk about today. So stay tuned and have fun. So hi again and welcome just for a second time. So talking about crates and camels is sometimes a little difficult because most of the time it's used as a convenient solution for some very nasty problems. And if you take that away, I get the feeling that some people are just a little desperate. But I think whenever we use tools and things for our dogs, we really need to know how those work and how our dogs are feeling in it or using it or whatever. So to begin with, I would like to talk about crates when they are introduced in a very nice kind of way. So the people are very concerned about associating the crate with positive things and to make it really nice for the dog. So the crate's in a position where the dog can find peace and quiet. It's furnished with a nice blankie or a dog bed or something the dog likes. And there are cookies thrown in and um, of course chew toys and licky toys and something like that for the dog to feel comfortable in it and this is a very nice kind of way because the dog learns that whenever he is in his crate nice things happen and of course very important it's his safe zone and no strangers or visitors or family members he's not close to reach in and do stuff. So you should always avoid that. The only thing is that safe zone should always be open. So the dog can uh, decide for himself whether he wants to be in it or uh, walk around a bit or whatever. So he can leave at any time. That's very important because whenever an animal, and we are animals too, is caged, the nice safe feeling goes away. And the inability to leave a situation when it becomes uncomfortable is very stressful. And uncomfortable can happen very easily. There might be a draft or a loud noise or something like that. Or um, the dog just wants to go out to greet somebody or bark at the mailman or something like that. So, of course, we don't want that, but the dog might want that. And as soon as he realizes he can't leave this space, it's becoming uncomfortable. Therefore, a crate should always kept open, except, of course, for the car. So whenever you want to use a crate for the car and you want to introduce it in your home, you can also work on closing it so the dog's used to that. But for a safe zone or a relaxation zone, the crate should be kept open. And this also includes a crate for puppies. So what's often done is a puppy who isn't potty trained yet or would destroy stuff when left alone is put into a crate and the crate is closed and so the puppy cannot destroy anything and isn't as likely to pee because he doesn't like to sleep in his own urine. But what that does is it's making things 
extremely uncomfortable for the dog because the inability to do something does not take away the necessity to do it or the wish to do it. So when you have a dog who likes to chew on stuff and you put him in a crate, he still likes to chew on stuff, but he's no longer able to do it. So what are his options? He can start chewing on himself. He can start chewing on the crate. And of course, that's not really something very, very comfortable for him. And of course, it's not good for the crate either. And for the potty training, your puppy will not lose the need to go relieve himself. He will just keep it and um, try everything not to wet himself. But this is extremely uncomfortable as well. So the perfect thing to do would be to put the dog into your bed very close to you because that's something natural for a dog. Sleeping close to somebody he likes. Of course, that uh, especially for puppies because they are just babies and they have lost everything recently and therefore they need this this comfortable family feeling and sleeping in your bed would provide that of course you might not want that then it's no option but if there is any way you could do that this would be perfect because whenever your dog's getting a little restless because he has to potty you will wake up and you can take him outside to potty and this would be awesome so your dog uh, has the security of his family he has the comfort of somebody close to him and he can uh, relieve himself whenever he needs to so this would be perfect and if that's no possibility then um, you could use these uh, potty training mats and train your dog to pee on that or you can just Try to wake up as soon as your dog needs to go outside or um, you set an alarm every few hours whenever you think your dog will have to go outside. And of course, if your dog is chewing on stuff, you should always have in mind why he's doing so. Some dogs, especially when they're teething, just like the feeling of riding down on something, then you should provide something your dog is allowed to chew and um, try to keep everything else safe or work on a recall or something like that to keep your dog from doing so. And if your dog is chewing on something because he has some case of separation anxiety, then it's no option to just take the chewing away because the problem is not chewing the problem is your dog is scared to death when he's alone so of course you have to work on him being comfortable while alone and if you put him in a crate he's not going to learn that again if you use an open crate for a relaxation zone that's awesome but you have to uh, introduce being alone very carefully, very small stepped, and um, there's a lot of preparation to do before you start the actual leaving him training. And a little side note, it is illegal in some countries to put your dog in a crate for hours. I live in such a country and I think it's awesome because it's, it's no way to treat your dog. Absolutely not. And it's a different matter if you have a very, very big indoor kennel. But in my country, a kennel has to be 15 square meters per dog. So you see, this would be a really, really big kennel. And <laughs> it might be easier to just use a room. And again, this cannot be something to prevent your dog from expressing his fear of being alone. Whenever your dog has to deal with separation anxiety, you have to train and get him comfortable with being alone. There is no shortcut, there is no quick fix, 
you have to do the work. It's actually not much work. The management is the tricky part, but it's possible. And it's so great for the dog and for you, of course, because you just can feel relaxed while going away and you know your dog's fine. And another thing is it's very unnatural for a dog to be alone, whether it's outside or inside. It's just not very natural because dogs have been domesticated or have domesticated themselves and they are used to living with us. Of course, not every dog on the planet is like that, but the dogs who live in our household are used to that. So leaving a dog alone for 10, 12 hours a day is just not really a nice thing to do. It starts with the dog is unable to go to the toilet whenever he needs to. And if there is a doggy door or something like that, so he can go outside, of course, you take that problem away. But your dog can go outside all the time and he's exposed to everything that is outside. So a lot of stimuli, maybe people going by your house, I don't know, um, in which area you're living so if that would be okay i would be very concerned because maybe there are some children who find it funny to poke through the fence and because they don't know any better or people go by who are startled uh, by your dog barking and hit him or something like that you can never know and therefore i wouldn't do it and another thing is a dog is not made for being alone all the time and most of the time another dog doesn't solve the problem because dogs have grown to be a lot closer to humans than to other dogs of course if you have two dogs who are really really good friends and like each other a lot it can make things better but i wouldn't try just um, adopting another dog for for my dog to have it easier to be alone and I'm sure you don't do that anyway, but I have a strict policy of no outdoor kennels because I really don't understand why I would keep my dog, who is supposed to be a friend and a family member, alone outside. It's just weird. <laughs> and uh, for the dog, it's, it's weird too because our dogs are just as attached to us as we are to them. And... Therefore, they want to live with us. They want to be around us. They want to be close to us. They want to play with us. They want to do stuff with us. And to put a dog away for no reason, then why would you have a dog? It's, yeah. And I know for some people, a dog is just another uh, piece of hunting equipment or an alarm system or something like that and yeah that's just something where the dog's feelings and the dog as a living being with emotions and a personality is just not considered and yeah but let's get back to uh, more nice things so if you want to introduce a crate to your dog as a safe zone for inside. Just try to watch your dog and determine how his preferred spots look like. So does he like to hide somewhere or does he like to lie on open spaces and watch everything? And is he stressed with that? If he's stressed with that, I wouldn't use such an open space for him and try to introduce him to something more quiet. But he's, if he's fine with that, a crate wouldn't be perfect because it takes a little bit of vision away. And if your dog likes to hide in something, you can put the crate in a spot where it's very cave-like and therefore make it attractive for your dog. If your dog's somewhere in the middle, you can put down a dog bed or a crate or whatever in a very quiet area 
but somewhere your dog is still included in the daily life. And then the process of making your dog comfortable in it starts. Some dogs don't really need any invitation. They just see this new cave-like thing and they're in and that's it. <laughs> so that would be awesome. But if your dog needs a little help, you can just start throwing food in there. And whenever you give some licky thing or chewing thing to your dog, give it to him in the crate. He can walk out with it whenever he wants to, but he receives it in the crate. And after some time, your dog will associate the crate with nice things and will go in by himself. And that's the moment where you can use it for some alone time preparation work. If you want to know more about getting your dog used to being alone, you can just write me an email and write me uh, a WhatsApp, whatever is more comfortable for you. And of course, if you have any other questions, you can write to me as well. I'd be very happy to help um, however I can. And if you want some specific topic discussed on the show feel free to write me as well so that's it for today and i hope you find a perfect relaxation zone for your dog have fun and until next time bye